Eleanor Morris specializes in the politics of the European Union, including global security issues such as migration, public health, and international crime. This past summer, the outcome of the United Kingdom referendum on EU membership, of course, sent shockwaves across the globe. Uh, amid an ongoing refugee crisis, lingering financial recession, and the constant specter of terrorism, the European Union now faces existential crises. We look forward to exploring with or without EU in five minutes or less as <laughs> Eleanor Morris confronts a possible breakup. Okay, thank you. And I apologize in advance for sullying your evening with politics. Um, 2017 is a fascinating time for politics, for sure. And if you happen to be a political scientist like me, it doesn't get much better than this. More people are interested in politics than ever, and I believe that's a good thing. Uh, my friends often ask me, what in the world is going on? What are we gonna do and what is gonna happen? And this cartoon sums up my feelings on the state of global politics at this point. This cartoon is from 1941 and drawn by none other than Dr. Seuss for PM, a New York political magazine. In this cartoon, you can see Dr. Seuss poking fun at the then US policy of isolationism. He was a staunch critic of this policy, policy and believed strongly that US engagement in the war and in the world would make the world a, a, make for a more peaceful planet. This is my view as well, which is one of the reasons that I view the current state of European Union-US relations with growing alarm. Note that I'm not arguing that changes in the EU-US relationship are not warranted, but rather that a productive, engaged alliance is an important one for global geopolitical stability. The one word that characterizes US politics right now is uncertainty. And I'm going to assume that most of us here are familiar with US politics, so I'm gonna let these cartoons speak for themselves. That same word characterizes the EU today as well. The first political cartoon you see here, of course, characterizes the uncertainty facing the EU post-Brexit. While the historical vote occurred last June, just last week, in case you were paying attention, the UK officially triggered Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty, which starts the two-year countdown, unlike my five minutes, of officially negotiating the departure from the EU. Exactly how this will play out is unclear, but one thing that is certain is that it will be very, very messy. The second political cartoon shows far-right candidates across Europe parroting the Trump policy of make America great again. Growing populist trends on both sides of the Atlantic represent a sharp departure from the type of liberal democratic order that has characterized Western democracy since the end of the Second World War. Clearly, we are in a period of change and instability. And it's important to remember, what is this actually a change from? That is, what are the hallmarks of the US-EU relationship in the post-World War II period? The first one, and this is critical, is this relationship has been always based on stability. This stability originally was brought on by the Marshall Plan. The plan ensured US, the US commitment to Europe's reconstruction after World War II and offered vast economic support. This economic support allowed Europe to focus on rebuilding itself politically, economically, socially, and where the, it ultimately allowed the EU to form the precursor to the EU, which was the coal and steel community in 1951. The next, next we have NATO. This, of course, is the defensive military alliance for the North Atlantic states, whereby participating states promise a collective response against any other state that jeopardizes a member's security. Even though many people argue that this organization is, be is at best a Cold War relic, there are many others who argue, in my view persuasively, that NATO serves a critical purpose in transatlantic security. Finally, in the post-World War II period, the EU and the US, through a range of bilateral and multilateral arrangements, have supported and reinforced each other's foreign policies. Even when differences have arisen, and heavens knows they have, the EU and US have shown a remarkable willingness to work together, even when disagreements have been serious. So where are we now? Exactly. So that means the only thing we know for sure about 2017 is that we are in a period of incredible geopolitical instability. 
That instability is always worrisome to political scientists, and there's a few key attributes that I want to illustrate this point. The first is perceived, notice I'm saying perceived, retrenchment by the U.S. This is the idea that make America great again means that we will step away from international commitments and international involvements. The next marker of instability at this point is the real challenges to democratic governance that we're facing in the United States and in member states across the European Union. Some of the hallmarks of these challenges include press freedom challenges, um, in growing levels of corruption, both real and perceived, far-right electoral successes, which we are seeing again and again in Netherlands just a few weeks ago, France potentially in a couple of weeks. Okay. I'm going to say, can I say one last sentence? You sure can. I feel okay. really bad about having to do that. That's okay. Um, so one thing that my ultimate argument here is that we need a strong EU-US partnership. Um, none of this can be handled alone, and we cannot wish problems away with a policy of isolationism or perhaps with today's headlines in mind, unilateralism. <laughs>